Let's quickly chat about drawing a hyperbola. How do we feel about our hyperbolas? Do you remember from early in the year? They seem very complicated, but actually it's not that bad. Um, as the, the most complicated part is making sure that you have one point on each part of it. So I think if you are able to do that, then it's not too bad. So the first thing when you are given a, an equation of a hyperbola is to get your asymptotes. And when you are drawing the hyperbola, those are also the first two things that you would draw. So again here for the x asymptote, the vertical one, Sorry, I thought there was an H there. For the vertical one, it's always the opposite sign in the equation to what we have, to what the equation of the asymptote is. And the reason for that, guys, is because this value is the value that will make the denominator equal to zero, right? Because if the denominator is equal to zero, then that whole equation is undefined. So that is why we have the different sign. So if we have x minus 2, then 2 will make that equation or will make that denominator equal to 0. All right. The y one is easy. The y one is just the same as your q value. That sign doesn't change. So that is the horizontal asymptote. And you also draw them with dotted lines. For the y-intercept, easy. You make x equal to 0 and find that value. X-intercept, this usually requires a few steps to solve for x, but it's not very complicated. You make y equal to 0 in the equation, and then you solve for x. And then I've just added here, you have to plot one point on each part. If you're very lucky, then the x-intercept will be on one part and the y-intercept will be on the other part. Often that doesn't happen. Often both of those points lie on one part of it and you then need to choose an x-value that will give you a point on the other part. All right. To figure out what we need to sub in, we look at our horizontal asymptote. So say we have a part on this side and a part on that side, right? If you have two points here, you need a point here, you're going to choose an x value that is smaller than the x value of the asymptote. Okay, if you need a point here, you're going to choose an x value that is greater than the x value of the asymptote. Okay, for your axes of symmetry here, I think, I don't know if we discussed this earlier in the year, but you are always going to take the denominator and your q value. You have two axes of symmetry. They are always the 45 degree line and then the 135 degree line. All right, these two axes of symmetry intersect, we can add that maybe, on the point of intersection of the asymptotes as well. <clears throat> so these two intersect on the point of intersection. of the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote. Now the coordinates of that point is or will be <laughs> P and Q. Right, if your X asymptote is X equals P and your Y asymptote is Y equals Q, the point where those two asymptotes intersect, where they cut, will be P, Q. Right, so whatever the X value of your asymptote is and then the Y value of the other asymptote. Those two axes of symmetry also cross through that point. All right. They always go through the point where the two asymptotes meet. And what you're going to do to get the positive gradient one, you just take your denominator and your Q value. For the negative gradient one, the 135 degree one, you're going to take, you're going to negate basically your denominator and then use your Q value as well. Okay. Let's do an example. I would like you guys to try to do this one on your own. <clears throat> y equals 6 over x plus 1 plus 3. Also, please draw in the axes of symmetry for me. So let me add that there. Um, And what you're also going to have to do is you're going to have to label those axes of symmetry as well. So you're going to draw them in and then write the equations of each of them on either of the two arrows. All right, I'll give you a few minutes to do that one on your own.
Okay, those are the calculations, guys. Thank you. Let's focus. So I've written my asymptotes down. And again, you don't have to write all of this stuff down. I always just write down everything so that you can see. <coughs> so the one is x equals negative 1. The other one is y equals 3. Often in TESO exams, that is a question in itself, with especially matric finals. For some reason, there is always a hyperbola question in matric finals where they give you the equation. The first question is always write down the equations of the asymptotes. Two marks, one, one. Very nice. Next one would be axis of symmetry, usually, and then sometimes they ask for the x-intercept or the y-intercept, and then they ask you to draw. So this is something that always comes up in the part in the matric final exams. Um, y-intercept there, you make x equal to zero. Again, you don't have to show the subbing in there. You can just get to nine from there. For the x-intercept, you would make y equal to zero and then solve for x. Did we all get negative three there? And then for the axes of symmetry, I just always number them, just so that I don't get confused with the two equations. Um, but it's fine, you don't have to. So the positive one is x plus 4, and then the negative one is negative x plus 2. Now guys, remember, these are straight line equations, right? So this is going to be the y-intercept of that graph, and that is going to be the y-intercept of that one. So when you are drawing this line... You don't actually have to calculate the x-intercept as well. They're not as strict with these ones. You don't even have to really label any points for some reason. You can just kind of draw it, but I always do plot my points. So it's going to go through the point negative 1, 3, right? The point of intersection of the two asymptotes. And then it's going to go through 0, 4, this one, and the other one, 0, 2. Yes? Said, um, the intersection point is P2. Mm -hmm. Which is negative 1, 3. Which is always the x value of the x asymptote and the y value of the, well, the value of the y asymptote. Yeah, because it's plus 1, it's x plus 1. But remember, it's x minus P. X minus, so that switches signs. Yeah. So your P value is going to be negative 1 in order to get x plus 1, because it's x minus negative 1. <clears throat> All right, there we have the graph. I didn't use the same scale on both axes, which is why my two lines, my axes of symmetry, don't look like they're making... I mean, they are... Yeah, no, yeah. Whatever, it's fine. It doesn't matter. We are not going to worry about that. So you can see there, I have those two lines going through the point of intersection of the two asymptotes and then that is the point zero four and that is the point zero two guys if you're worried about labeling those should i label them should i not rather just play it safe and label them right you will never lose a mark for labeling a point you might lose a mark for not labeling a point okay so let's play it safe let's rather label those <clears throat> you don't have to label the x-intercepts that's fine and this was one of those nice graphs where we had our x-intercept on the one half and the y-intercept on the other half, so we didn't have to sub in any other x-values. But I did write a little note there at the bottom. Just as a reminder, you do need one point on either side of the x-asymptote. So one point where x is smaller than negative 1 and one point where x is greater than negative 1 because negative 1 is where that asymptote is. So if you needed another point, you would have to figure out is it on the smaller than or the greater than part and then sub in an x value. Yeah. In a This one, so you would again, I think I did make my ticks here. So you would get a mark for each of the asymptotes. So one, two, a mark for each point, basically. If you had to calculate an extra point, that would be an extra mark. So then you would have x-intercept, y-intercept, and then third point. Your two asymptotes, so that would be five, and then a mark for your shape. Right, and if they've asked for the axes of symmetry, which usually they don't, um, but they might, then that would be an extra, I think, one or two marks. So between five and seven. Okay. <clears throat> All right, any other questions? 
I am just going to give you two more hyperbolas to practice for homework. There are 15 minutes left of this lesson. So let's see how far we can get. Are there any questions on that graph, guys? Okay, it's, I'm going. Can I go? Is it okay? All right, there we go. So same thing, two equations there. You are drawing the hyperbolas and you are going to draw the axes of symmetry as well, please. Okay. 